Hello and welcome to Merlin's Manor. Today I'm going to be showing you how to play River Valley Glassworks, starting out with a general how to play and then going into how the solo mode works and then we'll have a solo playthrough against Otto Snugs, who is the easiest of the opponents which they suggest you start with. Each solo opponent has their own way that they work and so I'll be going over how Otto works and you can discover the rest on your own. Now I'd like to point out that I have the Deluxe Edition. There is an even fancier edition called the Founders Edition, as well as a basic retail version. So your components may look a little different than mine, but they all play the same way. Now let's get into the setup for the game. You're gonna start out by taking these river tiles, shuffling them up and placing them out in a random order. And then you're going to add glass to them based on the stones listed here. And so two for this one, one for this one, and so on. And when you're done, it's going to look something like this. And then over here, you're going to place out five glass in this area here in the lake. You're going to set up the boards, your, your player board like this, with your character on the zero spot here. And if you're playing solo, you'll also have the solo opponent set up somewhere where you can easily reach it. And then you're going to give the first player marker to whoever is the first player. Everybody's going to get three glass to their dish over here. And for a solo game, you're going to set this out here for the solo opponent. And that is the setup for the game. Now let's get into how you actually play the game. On your turn, you're going to do one of two actions. You're either going to place a glass out onto one of these spaces with a matching shape to the shape that you just put out, and then take from one of the adjacent spaces all of the glass that is there. And so I could take these two from here, or this one from here with that placement. Or if you would not like to match up with the symbol, you can actually take two of the same shape and put them on any space, and then you can take from either adjacent space from there. Now let's say that I wanted to place here and take from one of these two spaces. I would take both of those glass off the space that I chose, and I can put them in any order down here on my board. Now once you have a color in a column, every time you would add a piece of glass of that color, you will add it to the same column. Whenever you get a new color, you're gonna go off to the right here. You're starting from the left and working your way to the right. And so I chose these two here. This tile here is going to come to the end of the river, and you're going to add the amount of stones based on the next one in front of it. And so two stones in this case. So that is one option for what you can do on your turn. You do want to be mindful as you do this that if you get to the top here, anything else is going to go into your overflow here. And if you get to the end here, there's going to be at least one extra color, two extra colors if you're playing in a five player game. And anything that's in a color you do not already have is also going to go over here. So be mindful of that. The other thing you can do on your turn and generally you're going to want to do this when you have zero or one piece left in here because you're going to have to take four and any extras are going to go into your overflow and be negative three points. If you were to take, in this case, from this, you're going to take four. If you were to do that, then you would have to put one into your overflow. But let's say I was down to only one and I did this, then that would be fine. I would have five now. So you'll take four of these pieces, any four that you want, and then refill that area. In a solo game, you would actually take the final piece and you would put it here. And in a solo game, whenever it gets to the third time that you've done that, you'll have your third piece placed out on here. That would trigger the end of the game. The other way that the end of the game will trigger is as you are taking pieces and putting them on your board, you're going to be moving this piece up for however many you take. So we're at two at this point. Once you get to your 17th piece on here, that would also trigger the end of the game. And that is the way that the end of the game triggers in a multiplayer game. It's always going to be because somebody had gotten to the 17 point. At that point, when the end of the game triggers, either in a solo game or in a multiplayer game, you're going to finish out the round so that everybody has equal amount of turns. And then everybody will get one final turn. And if anybody has less than three glass on their board, you will draw up to three here. And that is the basics of how you play the game. As you fill up your board, keep in mind the different rarities that are listed here. White and purple are going to be your most common colors, and orange and yellow are going to be your least common colors. And so as you're filling your board, keep in mind all of that, because as I said, you have to add 
the same colors to the same space and if you overflow you're going to be getting those negative three points also when you, you're going to try one to spread out to the end because for end game scoring you're going to get 22 points for each row that comes all the way to the edge here and then any other rows basically you're going to go out as far as you don't have any gaps as soon as you have a gap you're going to stop going out and then you're going to score for that based on what it says down here. So you want to have as many rows going as far out as possible. And then you're also going to score for your two columns that go to the highest point and any ties are going to divert to the one that's furthest left. And so you want to be careful not to go too far up on the left ones because the ones that are going to get you the most points are the rightmost. They are the hardest ones to spread out to and then get up to. So that is part of that strategy there is how are you going to manage to spread out and then upward. So at the end of the game, you're going to score for your rows, as well as your two highest columns, and then negative three points per overflow piece. And then the person with the most victory points wins the game. Now let's go over how the solo opponent is going to play. Each one's going to play slightly differently, and they're going to tell you on their card how they play. And they are going to always gather on their turn. And so they're going to have a special way that they gather. Auto gathers the river tile with the most glass. And so that's going to be this one, this one, or this one. And, and any ties are always broken by the one that is furthest to the right, closest to the lake area here. And so it's going to take these ones here. And then as it covers up symbols, it's going to do something. In this case, whenever auto covers up one of these shapes, you're going to add a glass to that shape, just like so from the bag. And they're going to fill out left to right and when they get two new colors they're going to do it based on the priority here and so auto is going to put the light green here before the purple and then just like you whenever he gets more light green it's going to keep filling up there purple is going to keep going there and new colors are going to continue going from left to right auto also has an hourglass which has him skip a turn whenever he covers up the hourglasses there now if ever the opponent is to take one that they do not have the space for then it's going to go into the waist. And so if they had filled up all of these and got a new color, it would go straight to the waist. Any circles, when it keeps going up, is going to go to the surplus once they have more of that color. And any that have squares on it, which auto does not have squares, when they go up to the top, then they would put those ones in the waist if they went too high up. Some of the opponents will have ways that they will score uh, based on filling up the columns here. Uh, auto does not have that way of scoring. All auto is going to score for is he's going to score for rows, just like we do. If there's any gaps, then he will not score for those, and that includes gaps where they cannot place. And so if he had gotten all the way up here on all the uh, rows and then had this gap here, he would just be able to score the four. And then they also will score negatives for their waste and pauses for their surplus. So it's a little bit different for how they work and they'll tell you how much they're scoring for their waste. It varies from opponent to opponent. Auto will score negative five for each piece in his waste, which is only for the eighth color ones. And then for the ones that are in his surplus, he will score plus three. And so he actually wants to be able to get some surplus in there. As I mentioned earlier, in the solo mode, whenever you take from here, you will place one on there. And then when that is full, that is a one way to trigger the end of the game. And just as usual, if you get to the 17 space on here, you will trigger the end game. And so let's just use the setup we have right now. I know things probably changed a little bit from the way that we started out, but everything is set up the way it should be. And so let's just jump right on in and play this game so you can see how the game plays. And so we take our turn first. And we're going to go ahead and let's see what we want here. I am going to place out here and take these two. And I want a slightly, like I don't necessarily want the rarest of the rare in this first spot. So it's good that I've taken these two pieces. I'm going to go with one that's somewhat rare because I want to spread out a little bit more. Unfortunately, my second one is going to be one of the most common ones. And so I have to be careful I don't take too many of these because I want to be able to go up in these further rows rather than these early rows the most. But I do want to be able to go up these some because if these don't go up some, then we're not going to score for those rows very much. So this is going to come over here. And we're going to add two to that space because of what's written there. Now we take Otto's turn. He's going to look for the one that has the most 
that is closest to the lake. And so he's going to take these two. His priority here is to go with the light green first and then the light and then the light blue. He covered up this here, and so we're going to add one to here. And of course, we need to flow the river. And technically, the, the river flows first. It's just easier for me to do that, but there are going to be some opponents where you want to make sure that you flow the river before you do the things because they are going to, it's going to matter the order that they are out here. And so, oh, we add two to that one because there's two there. Okay, now we move into our turn. And let's see what we want to do here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this one again. Taking, actually wait, do I want to do that or do I want to do, I don't have, I don't have for that one, so I, I have to do that. So we're going to take these two. Oh, and I forgot to move up my two there. That's difficult to remember sometimes. I'm going to go orange here and green here because, again, I'm trying to get some of the most common ones I want out here a little bit more. So we're going to move that up to the four. Flow the river. Add one glass to there. Now it's going to take the one that has the most, that's closest to the lake, and it's going to want blue and then white. It's covered up a circle, so we're going to add one to the circle, and it's going to be skipping its next turn. Okay, what do we want to do? Let's see, triangles here, we're only going to get one thing. That's not a bad idea, but we don't necessarily want too many pinks anyway. So I think at this point we're going to go do our first grab from here. And sometimes I like to grab two of the same ones so that if I need that uh, flexibility there. Another thing to look for here is you might want to grab something that you want to be able to get more of so that you can um, put those out so you can get them later possibly. Uh, or just shapes that are things that you're going to want to go after. And these are actually ones that I want the most probably. And you know what, I'm just going to take these two pinks. No, I'm going to take the this one and this pink. And then this extra one is going to go here, and then we refill. And then he is skipping his turn because he covered up that last turn, so now it's our turn. And I was eyeing coming here. So, or no, sorry, going to be here. And he's going to take whatever I put there. Go ahead and put the green on there. And then, so I'm going to take these, because this is what I'm wanting to kind of stretch out with a little bit. And then this is going to go here. Two stones, like that. Now it's Otto's turn. He is going to take this, because it has three things on it. Order, we've got yellow, dark green, and pink. Now. Auto is full. If he takes any oranges, they're going to go to his waist. Actually, probably should have tried to make him take an orange. Don't know if I would have been able to pull that off, though. Because orange is one of the rare colors, he's less likely to get that one. And did he cover up anything? Oh, he covered up to skip a turn. So he'll be skipping a turn. And did he cover up that this turn? Yeah, he did. So he's going to add one to there. And so what are we going to do next? Um, we're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We are on the seven spot now. Let's come here, actually, because I have a plan. We're going to get these two. We're going to go there and there, going up one, two. And then he is skipping a turn. I am going to want to grab these. Oh, I don't have a turn. I don't have a plan, actually. Oh, yeah, I do. Right there. Misviewing the shapes there. Boom. So this is going to go here. This is going to go here. And that's going to go there. And then this is going to go up. One, two, three. Two new ones. Now it's going to be Otto's turn. And Otto is going to grab these because they all, a lot of them have two on them. Oh, he did get an orange. That's going to go to his surplus. And then he got, we're going to go to his waist. 
and he got a white, which is going to go to his surplus, because he's out of spaces where those can go. And then just flow the river up. Add a stone. Okay, if I can get more whites in, it's probably gonna be the easiest thing I'm going to be able to score. But I got triangle and this shape to work with. Oh, there we go. That'll work. So, one there and one there. Going up one, two. I need to get my final color in so I can start scoring those 22 points. What is Otto wanting? He's wanting these ones. Because there's three on that space. He's going to cover up there. I'm just going to put one to that space. Uh, that's going to go to his surplus. That's going to go there, and you're going to add something to the heart. Okay, so what colors am I missing? I'm missing yellow and dark blue. So I want either yellow or dark blue. I only have three more to trigger the end game, so I'd rather not take three. So I'm actually going to go ahead and come here and take this yellow. Boom, like that. Go up one. And I'm going to take the yellow pieces because I want to be able to put out a yellow to maybe get more yellow. Let's grab that piece and this piece because that's going to give me a little bit more flexibility there. I forgot to refill the thing earlier, but I got it. Okay. So now Otto is going to take these ones. White's going to go to its surplus. Dark green's going to go there. We're going to add one to that one. And then that's going to go there, adding to that shape there. Now this is probably going to be my final turn before we take our final, final turn. I need to figure out ideally how to get more yellow, more white, more dark green would have been nice, but I'm not going to be able to get two of those probably. More light blue is also going to be a really good draw. Okay, for better or for worse, I'm going to place out here. I'm going to make him take this section, which means it's going to get an orange that's negative five points. I'm going to get a yellow and a pink. That tr triggers the end game. I'm put two new pieces out on here. I have three pieces over here, so I won't get any more there. Now, Otto is going to take these because it has the most. One's going to go there, one there, one there, and it will get this. And so basically it got a net of negative two points from that draw, negative five plus three. And then we're going to advance. And then our final turn, I have these so I can place anywhere that I want to because they're the same shape. But I may or may not want to use those because I don't want to give him more than I have to. I would like a light blue, which we have right here. If I want that, I would need to do that. I would have also liked a white, but that has passed because that's negative points there. It doesn't give me too much more positive points. Yeah, that feels like my best bet is to come here, actually. I do have to use two to, to do that. Oh, well, that's going to give him quite a few points. He would get 3, 6, 9, 12 points from that play. I would get not quite as much. Uh, if I take these, I won't get the pink that I want. But I will get orange, which is decent because it will extend out a little bit more. Yeah, actually, that's, what, that's my play right there. It doesn't give him too many points. So boom, that goes there. So I can get these two. Go there and there. So I'm gonna have two full rows. And unfortunately, this is gonna be my second 
scoring column because it ties go to the leftmost. But I think we're going to do okay against our opponent here. It's last turn. It's going to take these because it's the one that has the most. There, there it would add to the circle, but at this point it doesn't matter. There it would add to the triangles, but at this point it doesn't matter. And then this one does go to its surplus, so it's going to get three points for that. And that is the end of the game. Now let's go over end game scoring. We're going to score 22 for this row, 22 for this row, and then four for this row because we have a gap right here, so we have to come to this point and stop. And these two rows are going to score nothing because we have nothing in this part here. So 22 plus 22 plus 4, and then we're going to score 20 for here. And unfortunately, we have to take this one because ties go to the leftmost here. And so 3. So 20 and 3. And so I scored 71. And now let's go over Otto's score. It's going to score 22 for here, 16 for here, 4 for this one because there's a gap right here, and then nothing for these ones. And then it's going to score plus 3 for each of these. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 and negative five for each of these two. So that's gonna be negative 10 there. So auto scores 47, I scored 71. And that's how you play River Valley Glassworks. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hit that like button if you did and subscribe to see more videos. As always have a great week and keep on gaming.